Greetings, it's Black Richess. Thanks for joining me here again. Today I'm going to talk to you about a topic that I don't normally talk about on YouTube and that's the topic of making a pack with a demon. I know I get a lot of questions about my own personal pact and my own personal beliefs and I don't often share what they are because I truly believe it's up to each individual to follow their journey and to read enough information and to have enough experiences that you feel certain that what you do is right for you. And if you listen to someone like me who's been practicing in this field for over two decades, you might feel like you need to just follow me and take a fast track. But my experiences have been different because I've had so many experiences in life so far and hence why I'm, I'm protected, I'm really secure and I know what to do if anything goes down. And maybe you haven't had the chance to have those experiences as yet. So I've taken some notes from my own book of shadows about making packs and uh, what can be really confusing about making a pact with a devil or a demon is that, um, well, what I'm trying to say is that there's several ways to do it and it depends on why you're actually going to make that pact. So for example, if you're working with the, the demons of the Goetia, that's probably what you'll hear a lot of people talking about or alluding to um, what King Solomon did. He, he captured or he controlled or it said that he controlled the spirits of the Goetia and he put them into little vessels and sigils and so forth and commanded them to do X, Y and Z for him or he would punish them. And so they did stuff for him out of fear. Now this is the stuff out of legends and there's a lot of people that have uh, documented this method of controlling or making packs with demons. They've written really well about it. But those who have succeeded in doing it via that method, I would really want to question what their success truly was. Um, I just, with my experience, I just know demons far outwit us. They're far more intelligent. Both angels and demons or anything on the spiritual side that hasn't been in human form. They're far more intelligent than us. So don't ever fool yourself to think that you can trap a spirit in an object, or a demon in an object, and he's going to be bound with you and forever in your debt. And you can throw insults in here at him and mention the name of God and the, de the spirit, the demon's just going to say, oh yes, I'm going to follow you now. That doesn't happen. So unless you're willing to learn ceremonial magic, which is you've really got to read about it, read the Goetia. Uh, if you're ready to, to follow that to a T, which means that you have to align um, whatever you do with the planets and with sigils and getting special ingredients that we don't have this day and age, special sense, there's a whole personal cleansing. It's not just a ritual, it's, it, it's, a, it's a whole process which takes a lot of time to do. And um, I think the average person wouldn't have the time or the inclination to follow that path. Okay, so I'm not talking about goetic style capturing and controlling of demons, right? That's a different level. The, the, um, the next uh, typical style of demon contact or pact with a devil, Satan, so forth, is really um, well documented in the world of um, Satanism. Um, making a pact with Satan and that's really um, you know it's initiation into Satanism and it's also forming an allegiance with Satan it's saying to Satan that um, you will give yourself over to him after X, X period of time um, regardless of course you'll you might put in a few things that you want him to do for you but once again, if you're asking the top dog to do anything for you, how realistic do you think or how probable do you think that is actually going to be? And, but however, I will say 
that uh, a, uh, I won't even say one, a few men that I've provided personal coaching to have actually gone back and formed a relationship with Satan. And they didn't actually form a, a pact with Satan, but they do have relationships with Satan himself, and it is a working relationship. And I'm gonna get into that um, uh, with my next statement. But just to wrap up, if you're forming a, an allegiance to Satan or going into Satanism, um, that's completely different from uh, form, uh, having an allegiance or writing a pact um, to have a demon work with you. Okay, completely different. So we've got the Goetia style, um, contacting, conjuring and capturing of demons to get them to do stuff for you, forming a pact with them like that. Then you've got the Satanism style, forming allegiance um, with Satan and, and basically giving over your soul if that's what you so wish to do or what I do okay so what I did years and years and years ago even before I would even say that I was on the left hand path is I had a few spirits that I uh, was working with um, probably on left hand path type objectives but actually they were Indian gods <laughs> and uh, I remember once I, I was in Bali and uh, uh, I was with my children actually and we were in Ubud and it's a very spiritual place and there was a beautiful Saraswazi and uh, with all her wisdom and knowledge and it, it's such a grand piece it's bigger than life um, size um, uh, piece so it's really domineering and it's her eyes are really staring straight into your soul and I worked with her before I even decided to head directly to um, the left hand path I worked with her for years and years and years and had amazing success in business while I was working with her so um, I just wanted to say that so I formed an allegiance a spiritual allegiance with her um, verbally at that point in Ubud in Bali before I took away her picture and uh, continued working with her for many years so that's important to know too that when you're forming a pack with a demon that you have a choice of what demon that you actually want to work with okay so that's really important to know um, so let's get into the third style that I'm going to suggest the way I made a pack with a demon so I decided and you'll see in many of my videos a sigil of Astaroth so I work with Astaroth and I also work with Lilith um, the, the two dominant ones that I work with and in order for me to work with these demons I had to really research everything about them there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of information out there that we're not even sure is correct or incorrect because this goes right back down to Egyptian times um, a lot of the Egyptians were heavily into ceremonial style magic and worked with um, demons. Um, they necessarily didn't see demons as evil like we do today. We only see demons as really evil today is because of what the uh, Christian church has implied that demons, um, what demons are and what they, what their motives are. Uh, but demons are just as powerful as angels they're just different I'd look at it as just different types of spirits um, and demons are more willing to work with us on, on in the here and now whereas angels really aren't and if angels were then a lot more people in this world would be saved and there'd, there'd be less death in this world and um, yeah that's why I, I choose to work with demons <laughs> they listen so, <laughs> and they want to work with us so all right so let's get into technique Right, so making a pact with a demon is an alliance, right? It's a business agreement or bond between you and your demon. It is not an agreement and you're not selling your soul, right? That's a Christian ideal, to sell your soul to the devil, right? That's, you know, if you want to do that with the second method I told you about, with going into Satanism, that's completely different than making a pact with a demon, Right. So what we're going in to do is making a, a working relationship. 
because like I said, demons are willing to work with you. It's just how committed are you to this working relationship? So when you think about it like a business relationship, um, if you have a business partner or so someone that you're working with, then you're going to do the best you can do to commit to the relationship and the, um, the vows of that relationship. And so that's what you're doing. You're forming a spiritual business relationship with someone on the other side. Does that make sense? This is what a pact is all about. So let's get into pact making. So um, it's really um, quite simple. I mean, you can make this as dramatic as what you want to make it. There is no right or wrong. Some people I've read have said that you need to speak Arabic or some other language in order to contact demons, but <laughs> I'll, I'll say it again that they are far more intelligent than that. Right? We're humans, we're, we have human flaws, we have human intelligence, we, we probably use a fifth of our brain. Um, demons can speak multiple languages they've been around for centuries and centuries and centuries and they know our silly little human minds right so don't be concerned about what you read about speaking a different language I will say though that if you speak Arabic um, when I do speak Arabic the demons well, what my demon tends to uh, like that. <laughs> so I think it's a little bit more old school and uh, he feels like I'm a little bit more novel. I got no idea, but he likes when I speak some Arabic words. However, you don't need to speak Arabic because um, demons speak every language. Okay, so what I've in my notes, what so let's get into the process, right? What I want you to do, the first thing you do is you write out what you're wanting to agree um, for this rela working relationship to be. So, for example, my demon is Astaroth, for example. And wh how do I want this working relationship with Astaroth to look like? What do, I, what do I expect from Astaroth? Now, I do say expect, not demand, because it's totally up to Astaroth to decide what and when they will, he will uh, work with me, how, how that looks like. In any business relationship, just because you work with someone doesn't mean they're instantly going to do it. You know, they're going to do it on their time as well. So you can put in your request what this pack looks like, set some boundaries, set some goals, you know, set, but you, you, you can't expect it. So many of you that get really dissuaded and change from um, working with demons and then you'll flip, you'll get scared and run back to going to the church on Sunday and then forget about, you know, your um, respect towards your demon pack um, and wonder why you don't get results. Well, that's because they know you're not serious. So I'm not saying to not go to church. If you go to church, good luck to you. Um, and that's absolutely fine. Hey, I sometimes go to church and uh, enjoy a good lecture on history because that's how I, I see um, a lot of religion. But yes, so imagine that I can go into a church with me and my demons and recite the Lord's Prayer. So um, for any of you Christians out there that think that the Lord's Prayer scares away someone from the left-hand path or demons, wrong! It's just complete Christian bullshit to, to scare you. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, maybe share this video with your minister. Um, so, yeah, so begin by writing down the pact, exactly what you want it to be. It can be as detailed, it can be as simple as what you want. But just, you know, just before you get into the ritual that I'm talking about, maybe a week before, maybe a couple of weeks before, maybe you think about this for a year. Write down what you're willing to do, what you're, how you will devote yourself, how you will honour them, right? Not worship, but honour. Um, think about the way you'd honour uh, your dead ancestors, okay? So you're honouring um, your demon, you're respectful of this relationship. Completely different thing, right? You're going to write down what, what the barriers, what the boundaries, what the conditions of this pact are, as much detail as you want. Then when you're ready to do the actual ritual part, 
once again, most of my rituals are probably done um, sky clad. Uh, that's just because <laughs> I'm a naughty witch and I like to be in the nude. But also, it's really awesome to, to be one with nature where possible. Um, I'm not saying go and get yourself arrested by sitting in your local park in the nude <laughs> and doing a, a, a demon pack. That probably won't go down well in court. Um, but and don't show them my video <laughs> so, but what you do is uh, you get into um, a state where you're comfortable in the surrounding that you want to do the ritual in you can light candles but if you're doing it to a cert for a certain uh, demon find out what that particular demon likes what sort of scent that demon likes um, if you, if you look in a lot of the Goetia demon um, uh, uh, content information there that's already been researched, it'll tell you what colors the demon likes, what scents the demon likes, what day of the week the demon prefers to be contacted on, what day, uh, time of day, sorry. So um, there's lots of great information out there that you can um, look at to, to determine when's the right time for you. Um, Right. Oh, and the other thing you want to do is get a sigil of the demon that you want to contact or, or uh, work with. That's really important anyways. I've always got, um, I mean, you can buy sigils um, already made, but for example, that's um, Astaroth sigil. So even if you don't have one, you haven't bought one yet, or you don't have a pack of the demonic sigils, just find out what the sigil is and just draw it yourself right that's what most important so when you're visualizing your uh, your demon you've got the sigil already there right so you're in your private space you've got your sigil you may be burning an incense that uh, you really like um, if you're not sure what incense to burn jump on um, the blackmagicwitch.com site and look under black magic and there's some um, black magic incense there for ceremonial magic and uh, just grab some of that and it'll suggest what incense is good so the other thing you need is a fresh piece of paper and um, unless you're willing to, to use a lot of your own blood which I don't recommend and I don't use as well um, uh, use bats blood ink or dragon blood ink which is really cheap and you can use either a quill pen, you can use a feather, or you can use, um, what else? Even the tip of a biro, a, a pen, to dip in the ink to actually write um, your pack. Um, so I don't want you to think that it has to be a really, really big deal, right? Just, just do it. I don't want you to feel like this has to be in alignment with that and this and that and the other. Of course, you can get into that, but I don't want you to fuss about it. Just, just do it. Just, just do it. Because <laughs> you, um, if you don't feel like it's right, you can always try it again. And this has been experience. So set up your environment. Get into state. I suggest to get nude. Pen and paper. Uh, your your paper. Your copy of what you want the pack to be, and uh, your ink. And then you write your um, your pact. And what I like to do is I sit there and I've already internalized what, what the packs are really about and I think about this relationship and I'm thinking about the sigil and I'm drawing that in, I'm bringing that all into me and I'm, I'm really 100% with my intention. This is a relationship that I want. After I finish um, drawing in um, the demonic en entity into me, I will, I will put a... I'll get a pin, I'll prick it into the top of my finger and what I normally do is I squeeze my fingers first and sometimes I'll use one of those diabetic, diabetic pins, I'll put it in the top of my finger so you'll see a big drop of blood appear at the top of my finger and um, actually on my wand making video you'll see how I do that, I actually show you how to get that big drop of blood on the top of your finger. And then all I want you to sign in blood is your name. So you're using your quill or your pen, you're putting it into your blood and then you're gonna sign your name. And of course, that's not an easy process. It could take you a few times um, to, to actually make your name, um, but that's just the way you do it. 
and then you can um, fold up the piece of paper and put a blood spot or a wax um, print um, you can pour some of the candle wax on top of the paper seal it with your fingerprint um, whatever you want and then it is done so you only really need to do this once once it's done it's done and it's done for life because it's done in blood that's why I want you to be serious about uh, what you're actually doing now what to do with the, the paper next well I've kept mine um, it's in a very private protected place um, back in Australia actually um, in a home that I own there by the sea um, which is protected uh, quite heavily <laughs> with witchy poo items and uh, it's funny how no one ever breaks in or goes into that house and it's rarely used um, but yeah it, it's sitting there in a very sealed protected place what you can do though is burn it so if you're worried about someone seeing that pact because it is a very private pact um, then you can burn it so at the end of your ritual you will just burn it wait till it forms into ashes and let it blow into the elements so because um, that's where spirit is it's in the elements and so that's where you want to release it to and you can finish it quite simply as I'm a witch I'll say some more to be um, but if you're an occultist or following some other tradition you could quite simply end it with whatever you want to end it with the words but then it is done right there is no taking back a pack I'll be working with these spirits that I'm working with to the day I die and I'm perfectly okay with that um, remember I'm saying if you're under 18 I do not recommend you do this at all and the reason why is that you might feel like you're you're under your own free will but I really would encourage you to learn enough about different religions and different methods so you can make the right choice for you when you're at an age that you can fully control the outcome of your decisions for most people under 18 you're still probably financially or physically under the control of an adult and that's to be respected in itself and it's a really beautiful time of your life it could be challenging I know but um, it's not a time to make a demonic pack okay so um, I hope I've explained this well uh, I've tried to put in as much detail as possible and explain to you the differences between the Goetia pack between the satanic pack and between making a, a working pack with a, a demon okay so I'll try and get to um, your questions below um, I'm not always on YouTube I really just I'm here to make these videos um, and be available uh, but then I could be off in a remote place or just focused on on the work that I do my spell work and so forth so don't get shitty if I don't answer all your questions it's not that I'm ignoring you it's just I'm not always on um, YouTube now remember if you want to uh, talk to me or make a consultation time with me um, I have 30 and 60 minute professional personal one-on-one -on -one consultations where we can talk via Skype or um, uh, Google Hangouts or, or whatever and uh, yeah you can book a time with me there that's no problem but uh, yeah I hope this has been helpful and blessed be thanks for watching